Right, I'm back with the third part of uh, Sophia's Last Day. Right now I'm looking at um, building projects that my students uh, did in uh, the previous year. Uh, I asked the students to work in groups to create something that you wouldn't see in the real world. Um, I thought it was interesting that the students basically created typical kinds of structures um, that sort of followed the rules of physics. Um, at first I was a little disappointed, but then I realized they really haven't been here, been in Second Life long enough to realize that you know, there are lots of things that you can do here that uh, you can't do in the real world. So you don't see a lot of floating this and that. Although I'm going to look up so you can see that there are some, or there were some, structures up here. Well, they're not there anymore. <laughs> there were, uh, in a couple of cases, some floating structures that the students had experimented. So I divided the, the class into groups, and each group um, had its space for creating um, different kinds of things. So here's a pool. I was actually quite impressed with this particular uh, sculpture, this particular spot here. One of the students, the one who uh, created this interlocking ND, um, I was so impressed with him that I actually hired him <laughs> to work for me um, and have not regretted it. So they have a lovely little sculpture here. They made a ball and put a texture on it, which I think was pretty clever. A little bar. that I believe you can walk through. No. Because they hadn't learned that uh, you could turn off the... that you could make an object like that something that you could walk through. Or perhaps they did here. Yeah, they made one that you could... a door that you could walk through. So this is very realistic, and they did a nice job. It was, it was fun to watch the students work on those uh, collaborative uh, projects.